welcome to Tea with Marie. I'm Marie Yunkin Waldman, your host, and we're here having tea at the Narragansett Towers in Narragansett, Rhode Island. And the towers at the end of the 19th century were a wonderful place to be. And I'm here with my guests, Kate Vivian and John Miller. And today we are going to be talking a lot about the history of the towers. Tea with Marie is going to be doing a two-part series at the Towers. The first part will be talking about the history, and the second part will be more about the events and the musical aspects, which Kate is bringing back to the Towers to recreate the heyday at the end of the 19th century. And this is so exciting. Thanks Kate. very much. We, we would like the Towers to be a place that is a center of all kinds of things going on, something for everybody, and uh, that's what and we're I working on. And I think that's what you're doing, Kate, and you're doing a wonderful job. Thanks very much. Yeah, bringing people back, making the place come alive again. Speaking of coming alive, John is a retired marketing executive who's also a history buff in the area in South County. And which is really Washington County, which I've been told. But anyway, I like South County too. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the history and kind of go down through the towers and talk about what's happening in the heyday. I'm sure everybody out there would love to know a little bit more about it. So in the beginning, in the beginning, there were glaciers and Indians, and then what happened? Well, about uh, 10, 12,000 years ago, the glaciers were here. And as they receded, uh, the Native Americans were hunting things like uh, mammoths and giant beavers and the rest. Mammoths are <laughs> around here. <laughs> <laughs> but as the, as the glaciers melted uh, about 8,000 years ago, uh, this beautiful bay that's behind us outside was uh, formed. Mm -hmm. The glaciers went as far, deposited uh, debris as far uh, east of here as Black Island. But they receded, and we have the we have the bay, Narragansett, beautiful Narragansett Bay, which is 147 square miles in uh, area. And of course, the bay is the focal point and um, important point when you think about Rhode Island. It certainly is. We always think of the bay immediately. I happen to know how many uh, gallons of water are in that. 70 billion. Wow, you don't have 70 billion. To, you <laughs> have to, in, in any case, uh, uh, the Indians lived in this area, Native Americans, mm -hmm. and, they, and they hunted in the winter, basically, and fished in the summer, and they moved back and forth and developed agriculture. Mm -hmm. the, in, in 1636, Roger Williams came to uh, Rhode Island. He landed, you remember, what's your knee top? And in 1637, only a year later, he opened a trading post in Wickford, which is about 10 miles north of here. Mm -hmm. He had w wonderful relations with the Indians, but some of the people that followed him did not have the same uh, kindly approach. And uh, in 1658, there was a the so-called Petacomskit Purchase, which bought a lot of the land in uh, uh, Exeter. And, and that's just right up the road from here, right? Up, you, up the people road can from, visit that today. Right. Mm -hmm. And these were these were speculators from out of state for the most part. There wasn't a state, but they were uh, mm -hmm. away from mm -hmm. here. In 1659, the next year, was the Atherton Purchase, and that was uh, accomplished by uh, another group of speculators, including the Smiths, who had formed uh, Smith's Castle. Mm -hmm. so Which they, is another place that people should visit in Rhode Island. Yeah, uh, North Kingston, a wonderful mm -hmm. place. Uh, the, uh, as a result of those purchases, uh, a lot of uh, people came in, mostly farmers, and they saw an opportunity for an export agricultural economy, and they uh, moved in, purchased land, traded land. Uh, they, the crops they grew were uh, basically corn, rye was, was done as well. Mm -hmm. And then they had the Narragansett the Pacers and the plantations were here too, right? right? And they cheese, mm -hmm. big sheep herds. Very unusual for that period of time to have that much agriculture and to engage in trade with other countries, I Yes, understand. it was. In 1692, uh, they, they developed a plan where they built, uh, where they uh, d divided the property in this area to seven enormous farms. And these were called plantations, which is mm -hmm. the origin of the name. So we had plantations here in the north as well as in the south, and the many south. people don't realize that. Carl Woodward wrote a book once called uh, Plantations in Yankee Land. Yes. Have you read that one? Yes. No. Yes. 
but they, uh, they depend on these enormous uh, plantations, very rocky soil be because of the glaciers, and, and sadly, about a third of the population in the early 1700s were slaves either uh, Africans or, or uh, enslaved uh, Native Americans. Too. Native Americans. Yeah, and they're the ones that build all these beautiful stone walls. Stone that walls in, uh, and build. Particularly the, in South County. They did the heavy, heavy lifting. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, there was, uh, mills were being developed. Well, now we're getting into the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, they, they, because the Slater Mill was built in the, in the 1790s in Pawtucket. Mm -hmm. Down here we had mills, uh, the Hazard family. Mm -hmm. in Peacedale, about two miles from here. Right. And at important. that time, Narragansett was part of South Kingstown, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it, was. Mm -hmm. it was. It was part of South Kingstown, became a separate voting district, but still part of South Kingstown mm -hmm. in 1888, and was incorporated as a separate town in 1901. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the industry came something else, which was tourism. And tourism. And the, uh, the first uh, out-of-state tourism happened when a, a man named Joseph Dulles, who was the great-grandson of John Forster Dulles, whom people will remember as the uh, great coal warrior. Many of us of our generation will <laughs> end about the young yeah. people. <laughs> who was the Secretary of State under? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. He uh, came in uh, 1848 to visit, visit one of the hazards at the Hazard Mill in, in uh, uh, Peacedale. Mm -hmm. And he came, and while he was here, he was so enthralled by by this area, particularly the beach, the Narragansett Beach, Who right out the window. Be a beach is so beautiful. That yeah. he that he uh, uh, took a lease on uh, all the rooms at a, a private citizen named Hadwin, and the next year he brought his his friends back. He he was from Philadelphia. And this Adela. is what started the Philadelphia group the coming Philadelphia up. Philadelphia connection, mm -hmm. but but he had a. Uh, uh, Dulles had a plantation of his own in South Carolina. What he oh, was doing he was buying buying finished goods uh -huh. to service the uh, uh, plantation in South Carolina. So that was the beginning of tourism. 18 was that before or after the Civil War? Before the Civil War. Okay. It was okay. 1848. No. 1856, mm -hmm. the, the first uh, hotel was built, which strange enough was called the Narragansett House. I don't know. No. We have pictures of that no. building, though, mm -hmm. down, downstairs in the lobby. Mm -hmm. oh, great, great. So people want to see that. That's another thing I want to mention, too. If you come down to visit the towers, which I certainly hope you do, with many events coming up, too, there are lovely old historic pictures, and it gives a, a good sense of what it was like in the past two centuries downstairs. Yes. Yeah. And to get back to... Uh, the tourists are coming, and the beach is the attraction, and the hotel is starting to be built. So, so this hotel was built in 1856. Uh, the uh, progress was halted somewhat for the Civil War. After the Civil War, between the uh, period of, I think it was 1866 to, uh, excuse me, 19, 1866 to 1871, there were 10 more hotels built. Now, these people who were coming from the South primarily. They were from Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Philadelphia, uh, St. Louis. it was too hot down there. It was too hot. They would come, <laughs> here, they would come here for the cooling breezes just as the Indians did. Yeah, the yeah. And they, uh, they came. What they would do, there was a railroad. Railroads were invented in England in 1832. Mm -hmm. uh, by 1837, there was a line called the uh, New York. Pick up boat passengers in Stonington oh. and bring them north. Okay. Uh, th and then th they had a little piece that came from Kingston over to Narragansett. Well, in the beginning, they would go, they would get off in Kingston, and then they would have to take a stagecoach, which was and a nine-mile trip over unpaved roads and was a terrible thing. That must have been awful. So Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> it was all with the beautiful gown oh, on yeah. and going in a stagecoach in the mud. Ooh. But they would come here and get on the Seaview Railway. Well, they would. In, 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 what, what would happen? Uh, this was before the Seaview, but but Mr. One of the Hazards had the sense to realize that he could uh, make something out of this. So he built a spur. Oh, the Hazards are wonderful. Wonderful <laughs> they people. <were> wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so he built a spur from Kingston Station. 
uh, which was a nine mile uh, mm -hmm. stagecoach trip to the South Ferry, which is about a mile which away. Which we can see from where we're sitting, which right. is down there. And that has now become a bike path. Right. Which is great, so people can use their bikes there. So then we have um, <coughs> the early hotels, and then we're uh, now into the, the, uh, the towers concept and construction. And tell us a little bit about that and the architects. Well, in, in 1883, a group of men called the uh, Casino Association decided that there should be more uh, social activity, more opportunity here. Mm -hmm. And they formed, uh, they, uh, formed a corporation. They hired the uh, New York architectural firm of McKim, Mead, and White. And no, it was her uncle who was Charles Damon Gibson. Charles Damon Gibson. And he was the... And between 1883 and 1886, they built this edifice that, that uh, the towers is part of, and it was called an area. And we can Pier see, Casino. and uh, I think the cameras probably do some footage of the sh towers, that this is the only part that's left from that. Right. that edifice. Do you know where they got the stone for this? The, the stone, uh, part of the foundation were stones. Mm -hmm. The arch is, is stealth itself was made from uh, westerly granite. Oh. And uh, oh. according to the technical books, it's, it's an ashlar. Build, building, which is cut stone. Hmm. That's but fascinating. The, beautiful, beautiful but stone. But the, but the whole uh, thing was it completed. It opened for business in 1884. It was July 17, 1884. But that was before the towers itself was was built. Now the towers, as you as you've probably seen on the screen, is is just the uh, promenade area of the building. It was the porte cochere, if you will. People what was that again? Port Cochere. Oh, okay, that's French. <laughs> which, was, which was the entranceway. And we know that. <laughs> and they, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the wagons would pull up. Promenade. <laughs> right, and, they, and it was also intended to be a cafe. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, very successful right, right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're sort of reenacting here right now when we're sitting here having tea. And they had tea in those days too, didn't they? Yes, they did, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got the towers. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Kate's going to bring that back too, right, Kate? Of course. <laughs> we, we have uh, a more current form of tea that we serve at our music and dancing every Thursday in the summer. Iced tea with mint and lemon. Great. That's wonderful. Anyway, I don't want to get uh, John distracted here, but every once in a while we'll add some little tidbits. So we're talking about the towers and the construction, and then of course more people came and there were more um, cottages in the area. I guess this is, we're talking now about the end of the 19th century. Yes. Right? 1896, they opened a new uh, depot on Boone Street, not too far from oh, here. Oh, okay. And that, that, that made it even easier. The, the, the people used to get off in the South Ferry it was easier, and, and you had people that there were about 20 hotels, gigantic hotels. The Matheson Hotel, which was uh, 100 yards from here, had 500 rooms. Mm -hmm. And each of these hotels had, had great occupancy. But at the same time, people came and they didn't, they wanted to have their own places, so they became cottages. Which are really huge. Which were huge. Uh, homes. But most of them were shingle style. They weren't like Newport. No, made like out the of opulent Newport. Yeah. Yeah. And that, to a certain extent, that was probably the Quaker influence from. Mm -hmm. uh, so so Nantucket was a different tone from Newport. I mean, there was somewhat of a rivalry there for a while, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Hmm. But, but there was a different so-called type of person who came to Narragansett versus Newport, perhaps, or I don't know how they did things. They were more subdued and less... Uh, the Quaker influence? Uh, yeah, Qu Quaker influence, and, and, and uh, probably they didn't have quite as much money. As, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, they had enough money. They were very important people mm -hmm. uh, coming here. And they... Uh, um, great, so then the towers...